Aren't those buttons awesome? This horn itself is awesome. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of it, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this. I love this horn. This is the Martin Handcraft Standard. You might not know what the Handcraft Standard is, but if you stay tuned to this video, I'm going to tell you a lot more about it. Everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Uh, it's always a a great treat when I get to play amazing horns like this. Uh, while you're here on the YouTube channel, take a moment, hit the subscribe button, stay up to date with us. We're launching all these new product videos, mini lessons, and the like. Uh, again, thanks so much for your great support. We couldn't do it without you. This is a horn that came in on consignment, and I've played a few handcraft standards. As you might know, the Martin Handcraft Imperial is one of my three favorite vintage instruments. The old Super Recording being one, and the the Busher 400 being the other. Those are my top three, um, and I have um, variations of each in my own personal collection, which I, I'm not selling. Uh, but this horn, the Handcraft Standard, I'm almost tempted to buy this, although I have too many horns because it plays so well. Um, it has a beautiful color to the sound. Um, and there's a few things. I didn't know it was a handcraft standard and I got it. When I got it in, I was playing it. after I took a vacation last week. Um, and as you can tell, my brain is still on vacation mode. But I, um, I got this horn. I started playing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best handcraft imperial I've ever played. And I have a really good one in my collection. And then I realized it was a handcraft standard. Now, you might say, what's the difference? Now, there's a couple big differences. One, is the receiver is slightly different Two, you can't tell on this horn because this has been silver plated um, but in the lacquer version there's no substantial nickel trim to the horn so on the handcraft imperial these these slide tubes are nickel silver so as the weight the valve cluster also has nickel silver um, so this is in general just a slightly lighter horn this is also the one of the earlier styles of the horn so the wrap is slightly different and the valve block is also slightly different, but still all Martin, and it still has that Martin handcraft standard bell. They didn't change that uh, too much until the late, late 30s. Um, this is a very, of the handcrafts and the committees and all this, this is probably maybe the easiest um, horn to jump to and play from a traditional horn setup like maybe a Bach or a Yamaha if you're playing something like that. This one also has that beautiful stop rod and all of the accoutrement. Um, and it has these great custom, let's see if I get that to focus. Again, sorry for this because my uh, good web camera all of a sudden is not working. So I'm having to use this web camera, which is fine, but it's not as good, but just a gorgeous horn. And the kicker to that is that these valves have been replated and look at that look how good they are like I said I'm very tempted to keep it and I might but if it's if you're watching this video then it's still available so I would scoop it up as quickly as you can this is my uh, Chagrel Operato conversion ACB 1C and it's a wonderful all-around mouthpiece I'm gonna play a little bit more uh, on this and then I'll pop in a uh, commercial mouthpiece as well and while it's not the best horn to play lead trumpet on it still can do it
my brain is still in vacation mode a little bit, sorry, but surprisingly versatile this morning. And maybe it's definitely more versatile than a, a committee. Although I love the committee and I love the committee sound, I think it's just slightly more versatile. It's easier to transition to. And this is the medium step bore as well. They made this in the one, two, three, which is the large bore. One was a straight cylindrical 445. Two is the medium step bore, which starts off 438 and then gets to 453 through the valve block. Then they made a number three bore, which was a 453, which ended up being 468. Then they also made a straight uh, extra large four bore, which I've only had one of those in my collection ever. Um, and that was massive. I think it was 472. Um, but this one, you could, you could do so many things on it. Uh, I don't know if I would play on uh, excerpt on it, but let's try Petrushka. Here, the intonation is probably not really like where you would want to play an excerpt, you know, like my Adams or a Bach or you know, Shire's Yamaha, whatever you play, uh, it's not going to probably do that. But it's got the fluff and it's got the, the thickness. Like, let me play a ballad, it sounds so good on a ballad. Like I said, that horn, I mean, we talk about the committee and there's a great video from the Canadian Randy Cole who talks about um, uh, with, I think it's Kevin Dean, great trumpet player from Toronto. And he says the Martin committee just paints jazz. And I think that's really where this horn stands out. It just has that thick and warm sound. Here's a lead mouthpiece and we're going to play some, some pop stuff on it. Let's do uh, Hang In Long Enough, hopefully. You probably can't hear it. And, and I know when it, things are really zipping, my dogs who are upstairs in my house, this is my home studio, freak out. This horn, they're freaking out on. I'm gonna play it a little bit more this weekend. You might never even see this video, but I think it will go up for sale. Thanks again for all you do to support ACB. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, stay up to date with us, keep on tooting, and grab this Martin before I change my mind. Cheers.